Hey guys, Matt Lamont from Benny Tech. Hope everybody's well in this uh, time of crisis. And speaking of crisis, the people that thrive uh, generally whenever uh, the country's in a crisis or we're in the middle of a catastrophe, like this virus epidemic, um, are real estate investors. So a real estate investor is any time that there's a recession or there's challenges. If you remember back in 2008, uh, all the real estate investors start looking for opportunities. So I'm going to kind of show you, you know, some things that a real estate investor is looking for and then how to get there in this system. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out just at the beginning is this show Alexa activation code. So a lot of real estate investors drive around. They do what's called driving for dollars. Um, that's where you drive around looking at houses and looking for ones that look like they're kind of beat up or abandoned. And then they find the owner of the house and reach out to them and see if they can pick it up as an investment property, right? So they're basically looking for apathy. The challenge for real estate investors is that, you know, when you pull up, it's not like there's a big sign on the door saying who owns it, right? So they have to look up who the owner is and the information on the property. That's where this Alexa comes in. So they can actually take a Alexa app and put it on their phone, or they can actually buy the physical Alexa and plug it into their car. But either way, if they have the Alexa, they click on show Alexa activation code and then follow these really specific instructions on the screen to link their Alexa to their OR Pro Farm account. So what that's gonna do is when they read off the address uh, to the Alexa or, or the Alexa app, it's going to read out all the information on the property. So that property profile that you pull from the system, it basically reads that to them while they're in the car. And then they can have it, a physical copy sent to their email. Any real estate investor I've showed that to really, really, really loves it. They dig that. So um, that would be one thing I would show them. Of course, the big thing that I would show them is where you can find opportunities. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different search parameters uh, that they look for. I have talked to a lot of real estate investors. In fact, I actually did consulting uh, for a couple of real estate investor firms, helping them find properties uh, that, you know, helping them find sellers uh, that were in distress situations. So the parameters that we should be setting is we're going to go with this combination, right? So owner occupied, I'm flipping that to a no. And I'm going to property characteristics and I'm putting in year bill prior to 1975. And I'm going to premier data. You see, I'm at leads and I'm clicking on this drop down menu. There's no wrong answer here. Um, most of these situations are reasons a seller might sell at a discount. If you showed this to a real estate investor, he probably couldn't even make up his mind on these data sets. Right. Any of these are pretty are pretty good. So we'll go with affidavit of death. And then we'll go within the last six months. Right. So that's my combination. So you don't need to put owner occupied. No, uh, but some real estate investors are looking for absentee owners. They're looking for other real estate investors that might want to get rid of their property or they're looking for vacation homes that somebody doesn't want anymore. Uh, another good combination would be so year bill prior to 1975. I want you to 
keep that when it comes to real estate investors. Why am I putting year built prior to 1975? I'll tell you why. We're looking for a maintenance deferment, right? If you have an older home, yeah, it could be renovated, but it could not be renovated. Our chances of find, finding a house that's kind of beat up increases when you have an older home. If you're just searching anything, you're including homes that are you know, just built or maybe just built 10 years ago, there's almost a zero chance that that home's beat up unless someone just came through and hit it with a sledgehammer a bunch of times, right? So that's why I'm putting in this parameter right here. You're built prior to 1975 or equal to. Um, but another filter that I can combine with that would be in the custom filters and I'm going to an out-of-state owner, right? So that's another one. So this means that the mailing address for the homeowner is not in the state of wherever you're searching. Right, in my case, the state of California. So why am I putting that? The reason why I am putting an out-of-state owner is because, again, I'm looking for apathy. That's These are the two emotions I'm looking for, apathy or distress, one of the two. Is there a problem that I can help solve? Or do you not care about this property whatsoever? They both have their pluses and minuses right? Someone that's apathetic uh, might sell me the house because it's not generating any revenue. They don't have a renter in there, or maybe the renter pays a little below the mortgage, uh, so it's at a loss. Maybe there's nobody in there. So that's what I mean by apathy. Why would I want to work with someone that's apathetic about their property? Because there's no emotional attachment to it. Uh, they're not in a situation where they're panicking and people that panic, you know, sometimes will pull out of deals and, you know, make strange moves because they're super emotional at that point. So that was, that would be the reason why, uh, I want to work with someone that's apathetic. Now on the flip side, and it almost seems contradictory, but you'll find deals this way too, is working with people in distress situations. So that is why. I'm going into the leads category and I'm choosing something that kind of looks like an I'm ambulance chasing, right? It's not really ambulance chasing. What I'm doing is I'm looking for a problem that I can solve. So with an affidavit of death, someone just died, they inherited a property. Uh, that might go into a little of the apathy category because uh, I might already have a property. And, you know, my, say my father passed away and he passed me a property and I don't want to keep it as a rental property. And I go and look at the house and the house is kind of beat up. So now I got to fix this house up and then put it on the market. Now me, I'm a busy guy, right? So I don't have time to go fix up this house and I don't want to go dump money into a contractor. But along comes a real estate investor who says, hey, you know what? You, I'll buy that house as is, and I'll fix up the property and sell it. But you got to give it to me for a little bit of a discount, you know. But another benefit is we don't have to use a real estate agent, so there's not going to be any commission uh, that needs to be paid out, right? So that's kind of their line when it comes to that. Bankruptcy is obviously a distressed situation. Um, you could even go years back on the bankruptcy. Someone that's filed for bankruptcy and people have money problems, you know, people are creatures of habit. So they'll tend to have money problems, you know, maybe their whole life. Uh, divorce situation, actually no hard money lenders that look for uh, divorce. Obviously that's a distress indicator. Uh, eviction, so this is, like landlord court, right? So the, it used to be a time where people uh, or real estate agents and other actually real estate investors would go to what we call it the landlord court, right? So they would sit in on landlords at a hearing about eviction. And when things didn't go their way, especially here in California, because California is super renter friendly, 
uh, things didn't go the landlord's way, then they would chase the landlord out of court uh, and ask them if they want to sell their house, right? Because at that time, at that point, the landlord uh, would be tired of the home. So that's again dealing with apathy. So you have a landlord just evicted a tenant, and they're asking, "Hey, you know what? Let me grab that property. I know it seems to be a pain in the butt. Maybe you don't want to be in the real real estate business anymore." Uh, for sale by owner, you know, obviously you can negotiate with the owner himself. There's not a real estate agent involved. A lot of times on FISBOs, which is why you should always use a real estate agent, FISBOs don't sell for as high as when you have an actual agent selling your house for the obvious reasons that homeowners don't know how to market their own homes and they don't have a network of real estate agents to reach out to either. Um, but for, for uh, real estate investors, this is great. You know, being able to buy a house at a discount and negotiate directly with the owner himself is great. Liens. So we're talking about weed abatement. So there's overgrown weeds in front of the house. Uh, we have unpaid utility bills in the lien section, right? This this is huge for real estate investors. Why? Because you, the minute you bring this up, they're going to be salivating. It's very, very hard to find data like this, uh, unpaid utility bills and weed abatements and, you know, homes seized uh, by the government for funding terrorism. All that stuff is in the liens, IRS tax liens. These, this is very difficult to find data, right? So that's another one you want to point out. Obviously, those are distress indicators. And notice the default, notice of trustee sale. So these are also obvious distress indicators. Uh, list, list pendants, uh, that is Latin for pending litigation. So this is somebody that's going to court. If you're in Texas, uh, and then further you move east, they use list pendants instead of notice of default, FYI. Um, in Texas, some loans just go straight to trustee sale. So they're going straight to the auction block. So these are pre-foreclosure situations, right? Um, obviously, someone's in pre-foreclosure. They're going to want to sell their house. The chances of it is in the high 40% range. So that's just some ideas for you guys. Um, the, oh, you know, one more thing, <laughs> probably the most important, make sure that you set the loan to value ratio at 65% or below. And the reason for that is that real estate investors need a lot of equity in that house. They need a lot of equity. So whatever filter combination you use, make sure that you put the LTV ratio at 65% or equal to or below to make sure that there's enough room for that real estate uh, investor to maneuver. If somebody's not getting money in their pocket when they sell their house to the real estate investor, there's literally no benefit in it for the homeowner. They need that equity to be able to put some money in the pocket of the homeowner. It's super, super important. So make sure you put this on every single uh, filter combination that you put on here, whether you're choosing a distress indicator or whatever. So the two big things that you need to leave on here, no matter what category you choose, is LTV ratio, 65%. And the year built prior to 1975. Other than that, you can go to town with any filter combination that you want and experiment and show your real estate investor clients that you have a ton of ideas for them. Lastly, the property profile. So I showed you how to get to it from the Alexa. They can also quickly get to it from this quick bar. So they just merely type in an address, I just uh, auto-filled it. I'm hitting generate report. If you don't see generate report on here, click on the down arrow right here and then go to generate report. So I'm going to property profile 
and I'm going to hit generate report. Now you can generate this for another user if you have them in the system by hitting this check mark. And it's going to pull up a list of your users. I'm just going to generate one for myself so you guys can see it. They're going to love this page. Uh, I know from trying to figure out what the after repair value is. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to like go through all the comps myself, but I have all the comps right here. So I can deselect or select the comps that I want and then hit update results. For real estate investor, that's huge. And then I'm gonna hit generate profile. So someone's a wholesaler and a wholesaler is someone that uh, they'll get the initial purchase and sale agreement, but they'll consign it to someone else. They'll usually consign it over to a cash buyer. And the cash buyer is going to be the one fixing the house. And wholesalers generally make five to $10,000 per deal, right? So what they're doing is just picking up the purchase and sale agreement. They're writing in a clause saying that they can assign that contract to anybody they want. And then they're sending it over to that person, right? So they have like a network of people that pick up houses for cash. Um, and then they're the ones that pick up the houses for cash will end up renovating the house. For them, this property profile is pretty important because when they're reaching out to their network of cash buyers, the cash buyer is going to want to look at the house and see if it's worth it right if this is a good deal what the risk is and generally when they when wholesalers reach out to cash buyers they don't really give them a lot to go on i have seen the emails the emails that come to me before and it's literally like a three line email of what the after repair value is what they think the comps are and usually it's all wrong right you have to double check it and it's one of the bane of cash buyers existences is going through wholesalers emails but here I have all the information on the property so we're not hiding anything and I'm showing my homework to a cash buyer this is super important and this is huge because if you're a cash buyer and you see a property profile attached to the email on a house that they're offering on an, on a on a purchase and sale agreement that they're offering to be able to know everything about the home, I know that this person is A, honest, B, I don't have to double check his homework. And this is a pleasure. This would be a pleasure for me to work with a wholesaler that sends something like this to me along with their email offering me this purchase a sale agreement. They do, cash buyers have to go through sometimes 50 emails, literally. I know I've done it. Literally, they'll have to sit down and go through 50 emails looking for one single property or one time that a wholesaler has actually done their homework correctly, right? And a lot of times, the reason why is because they didn't run the comps correctly or they read, read the comps and did the comps and then started using wishful thinking and imagination uh, to get to the after repair value. In this, in this scenario, I have all the comps right here. So I can honestly tell my cash buyer what I think the house is worth and I can justify it on paper with all the addresses of all the comps on there. I have the complete transaction history, owner name and everything. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is again, Matt Lamont from Benny Tech, shedding light on the real estate investors business. I think you guys should be reaching out to, to real estate investors right now, gearing up uh, because I have my ear to the ground. This is what I've been hearing is a lot of real estate investors right now uh, are getting data and sending out mail because they know that some people are gonna lose their homes and they're trying to cash in on that. Have a good one, guys.